one in our town. That's the reaction from some Jackson County residents regarding efforts by out of state Christian nationalists to potentially remake their community. Good evening to you. I'm Carrie Sharp. And I'm Rory Johnston. Our chief investigative reporter, Phil Williams, first broke this story last week about the efforts to, quote, build a town in the county seat of Gainesboro. And that shocked the people who already live there. After giving residents time to digest this news, Phil went back to town about 90 minutes northeast of Nashville, this time to listen to the people of Jackson County. How are you? I'm good, how are you? As word has spread across Jackson County, a gathering of friends quickly turned into an impromptu town hall. Some just came with questions. Do you want to sit down? I'm here for a Others with deep concerns. We don't want one news story to portray something of Jackson County that we're not. Their concerns. Uh, we're, we're building a town, right? We're building a a community there. The white Christian nationalists led by podcasters Andrew Isker and CJ Engel now setting their sights on Jackson County and the county seat of Gainesboro, hoping to turn this quaint community of just over 12,000 people into a political haven for others like themselves. Did anyone have any sense uh, uh, about these people prior to this story? <laughs> Among those we met, some had deep roots. My family's been here for seven generations. Others were drawn here by the openness of the people they now call neighbors. This town is such a loving group of people. I am accepted, even though I came from outside. And we were there to listen. What has this story done to this community's sense of well-being. I think uh, mainly people are scared. Diane Murphy is vice chair of the local Republican Party. Yeah, I listened to the podcasts. I uh, did the research on what you mentioned. It scares me that they are very clear about taking over. Developers with right-wing ties have purchased hundreds of acres of land in the area, trying to recruit other like-minded people to join Isker and Engel in relocating to Gainesboro. In a video posted online by one of the developers, Isker talks about the ability of those people to get their way in a small community. Right, you can exercise far, far more political power, even with a few hundred or a few thousand people, than you can on your own, widely dispersed across the entire country. When you hear them talking about coming here to build a town, to build a community, what, what's your reaction? I'd love to speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me mad. Diana Manley owns a local restaurant and she sees a community that's remaking itself without the help of strangers from out of state who don't understand what Jackson County already has. People from all different walks of life, genealogies, nationalities, race, you name it. We have got a melting pot right here in this small town, all working together to make this town come back to life. What is it you're afraid of losing? I don't want to lose what we already have, the sense of community. It is a very welcoming community, but I think they kind of came in under the radar and want to re recreate it in their own image. Forgive the background noise. I'm actually here at a, at a watch party with the Jackson County uh, GOP. Um, On election night, the podcasters monitored the results from Gainesboro with the real estate developer behind the project, Josh Abatoy, doing a live report from a local watch party that he had hosted. One of their podcast buddies also set up an account on X, formerly Twitter, that claimed to represent the views of the local Republican Party. It said it was the official uh, account of the Jackson County GOP. But it was not. Party Chair Bo Smith learned about the accounts from News Channel 5 Investigates. We also showed him where Engel had tweeted that the best way forward for Christian nationalists is to take over local level outlets of the Republican Party. So that's not going to happen, especially now due to your reporting. Um, we're, we're thankful for that. And, um, you know, knowing these people are in our community is a big deal. Have these Christian nationalist podcasters, these developers, tried to have a meeting like this to sit down and answer your questions. 
But what really concerned these Jackson County residents, some who were reluctant for their faces to be on camera, are the podcasters' views that the civil rights movement was a mistake, that foreigners who've become U.S. citizens still don't belong in America. What is it you would like for these people coming in from out of state to know? What, what message would, would you have for these people? This town is not for them. No, it's not for them. We are not that community, and we don't want to be a part of a racial hate community. God made men to rule, period. Then there are their views on women and how they detest the specific impact of college-educated white women on the culture of the world they see around them. The white women on Facebook that you're referring to, uh, they are probably the scariest thing that these guys are going to have to deal with now. <laughs> What I saw and heard on this day is that if the Christian nationalists think Gainesboro and Jackson County is a place where people all think like them, they don't know Jackson County. These people's views do not represent our community. And if they think they're going to come in here and take over and force their views on everybody else, they're going to have a fight on their hands. Bill Williams, News Channel 5 Investigates. So who are these Christian nationalists and why are their views so controversial? If you missed Phil's original investigation, you can watch it right now at newschannel5.com and all of our streaming apps.